Once it was the third richest salmon fishery on the West Coast, but four dams on the Klamath River put an end to that. A century ago, the fishery collapsed, and so did the health and well being of thousands of Yurok Indians. This is all going to change dramatically, as those dams will now be pulled out, and not everybody is happy about it. But Ashley Bowers can't wait. The Klamath River is my church. That's where I go to pray, and that's where I go when I lose myself. I feel the water, and it tells me which way I need to go, and I know that's my home. Yeah. Ashley Bowers, Yurok tribe member. I love big cities, but it's not for me. Her ancestors have fished this river in this location. My dad taught me how to fish. For 7,000 years. From here in southern Oregon, where the Klamath begins its journey, to where it enters the Pacific Ocean 257 miles away, that is the Klamath River, just a few miles south of Crescent City on the north coast. And there was never an obstacle in the way of that river until we started putting them in beginning about a century ago. We have four dams. We have the Iron Gate Dam, Copco Number no. 2 Dam, Copco Number no. 1 Dam, and J.C. Boyle Dam. And removing these dams will open up how many miles of the river? We expect to reconnect 400 miles of historic salmon spawning grounds and rearing habitat. There are 12,000 major dams in the West. A few are beginning to come out. Sure. What is the overall goal of removing the dams? Oh. Great question. Fish passage. They're the number one goal of this project is fish passage. Dave Kaufman works with the company that's restoring the river. That's pretty big. By removing the dam. I see a dam coming up. That's Iron Gate Dam right there. Dams do a couple of things. They block fish from habitat, from physical habitat, right? So a fish swims up the river, hits a dam. Can't go past that dam. They wanted to access the habitat past that dam, and it can't. So when these four dams went in, the third largest salmon-producing river on the West Coast collapsed. I have seen it diminish from catching like 300 fish in a day to being happy if you catch three. So when the government approved of removing the four dams... Oh my God, we cried, we jumped up, we hugged, you know. <laughs> Oh, it was huge. But not everybody celebrated. Like any river in the West, right? Yeah. It's a battleground. About 300 people live around Copco Lake, and their lake, like this one and this one. Well, what do these reservoirs look like after the dams come out? Awesome question. So what this looks like is a pretty expansive mudflat, right? Okay. That so there's not, we're not going to be seeing water here except for like a creek? Exactly. Am I on recording now? Yeah. Biker Tom Farrell gave me some background. Northern Siskiyou County doesn't like it. That's the bottom line. Well, I've seen for sale signs around the lake, and I would guess property values are going to go down. I would assume so, yeah. I mean, not that this is high rent district out here, Yeah. but it's got to go down. Look at that over there. See that? Other dam removals by other companies have left people in the dust. Unbearable. I think we can all understand those people who bought lakefront property are not big fans of the dam removal, right? I probably wouldn't be either if it was my lakefront property. Maybe some of the tribal people are, aren't so happy and they, they haven't been so happy since these dams essentially severed uh, an important lifeline for them. Well, like Tom said, like any river in the West, right? Yeah. It's a battleground. It's a battleground. In the meantime, native seeds will be planted, which should return the landscape to the world of a century ago. And then we'll see fish in the river. We will see salmon uh, and steelhead in a river where they haven't been in over 100 years. And just imagine how the Yurok feel. It makes me emotional because that is our livelihood. That's how we lived, is fishing. And once everything is restored, then we have a healthy river, we have healthy fish runs, and then this means that my kids can fish and their kids can fish because there's gonna be enough fish in the river. You, you might think it's nuts that in a state that is so often susceptible to drought that we're pulling out four dams, but 
those dams, they weren't for agriculture, they weren't for drinking water, they were just for hydroelectricity. And the utility that runs them had the choice of either installing fish ladders, hugely expensive, hundreds of millions of dollars, or essentially just walking away and saying, well, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. It's only 2% of our hydroelectricity. We can make that up with wind and solar. And so they said, you want the dams, they're yours. So they're taking the dams out. Salmon fishery will be uh, restored. People living around the lake, kind of out of luck. The uh, four dams will be out in just over a year. It will take a decade to restore the area to what it looked like before they went in beginning a century ago.